Oh my God. I'm going to need a minute. I'm actually dizzy. Holy. Oh my God. <laughs> this football club, this football club is going to kill me. Genuinely, it's it's just, it's insane. It is insane. No, no way should I be this affected by something that I can't control. <laughs> it's, it's mental. We've just beaten Manchester United 3-1 in probably the best game of the season so far for us. Uh, I, I mean, our performance wasn't even that great, but... Oh, Declan Rice, Declan Rice, Declan Rice! In a way, I'm kind of sad we scored the third goal because Declan Rice, the moment he won it for us and then we added another one, kind of felt like the uh, the Villa game when Martinelli added one. Uh, honestly, um, God, where do I begin? I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm physically exhausted, but I'm still full of so much energy. I'm. <sighs> we were 2-1 down. I know you're thinking 3-1 up. How? We won 3 1. How were we 2 1 down? They scored. It was it was this this far offside. And that was it. I I, I was down. I, I thought, yeah, we've lost. We've lost to Manchester United. We've actually turned it around and we've won three in a row against them at home now, which we haven't done. Three wins in a row at home against Manchester United. We've never done that before. Typically United have been the better club for I mean, the history, right? And and that's just, it's changing now. They are not, Arsenal are a better football club than Manchester United. Whether you agree with that statistically or financially, that's fine. Manchester United are financially one of the biggest clubs in the world. They're, they're ahead of Arsenal. They they make more money. They make more revenue. They, they All of that stuff. But footballing wise, no. Arsenal are on top of Manchester United and it's, it's for sure. The downfall is crazy. Manchester United have now lost, they lost two games in their opening four. Um, I, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm normally like pretty quick to dissect what's happened and digest it and actually be able to talk through it. But honestly, I, it's just one of those games where it has everything. The only thing that was missing was some sort of red card. Um, a penalty. Okay, let's talk about the penalty because when I was doing the watch along, which please watch the watch alongs. Every Arsenal game pretty much this season, I'm, I'm live. Um, and I swear a lot, just giving you guys a warning. I don't swear in my videos, but I swear in the stream a lot. Um, let's talk about that penalty instant because I had a lot of people disagreeing with me, but I, I just, I can't, I can't unsee the contact. There is contact. It's soft. It's minor. But the way that Havertz was brought down, okay, maybe not brought down, but he felt contact and went down. It's, it's soft, but it's a penalty. It has to be a penalty. And I'm telling you, right, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for it, but if you're not a United fan, you know exactly what I'm about to say. That penalty would never have been turned... turned. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? I've just gone blank. Overturned. Thank you. No one told me. I just thought of it. That would have never been overturned if it was Manchester United. No chance. Any other club? Maybe. <laughs> it's just typical. It really is. And I feel like... Manchester United fans that don't think that was a penalty, I get it. It is soft, right? But I guarantee you, if Rashford's going down in the box and it was Saliba doing that, penalty! Oh, Arsenal buying the referees. It's it's just a penalty. And do you know what? We weren't given it. It was it was it was overturned. And I just I, I was a bit angry. I was a little bit disappointed. But I thought to myself, it doesn't matter because we will still win the game, and that's what we've done. Um, okay, let's talk through the goals really quick. So Erdegaard with the quick reply after Rashford scored. Um, the Rashford goal, by the way, was their first shot of the game. It was very unfortunate, okay, but great finish. Uh, Ramsdale almost saved it. And then we went up the other side of the pitch and scored. Perfect response, perfect time to, to draw level. Martin Erdegaard is my captain. Love him. And then there was just a lot of anxiety. No one wanted to make mistakes. We had definitely a few moments in midfield where we're giving away the ball so unnecessarily. And that was exactly what Manchester United wanted us to do. The only way United were going to come away from the Emirates with a win today or even a draw was to absorb Arsenal's constant pressure, hit them on the break. As soon as there's a mistake, bang, bang, bang. And that's exactly what they did. And that's how they scored. We fell into that trap. And that was it for the whole game. We'll look at stats in a moment. Um, there were times where Manchester United had the ball more and they were creating some good good passing and movement around the edge of the box. And th they could have maybe had 
one or two goals. I think Hoyland had a relatively good chance when he tried to flick it from Rashford's run into the box. But in general, Arsenal dominated this game from start to finish. We had the most chances, the best chances, and it just took a bit of time. Rice in the 96th minute and then Jesus in the 101, 101th, 101st minute. Just mental, absolutely mental. Um, I'm trying to work out who my man of the match is and I can't. Here's the stats. 55% of the ball, very good. Expected goals, 2.2 compared to 0.9. Lots more shots. Um, the second half, United were definitely much better than they were in the first, but they never looked like they were actually going to win this game. They really didn't. They didn't look like it at all. Who's my man of the match? I think it, it's either Gabriel or Rice or maybe Martin. This is the thing. Everyone put in a good shift. There was no spectacular performance today. Um, yeah, I, I think purely because of the, the match winning moment. I think Declan Rice deserves it. He was he was very good today. Very, very, very good today. Let's have a look at the table before we go into some of your comments and some tweets that I found that are just hilarious. The only team to have a 100% start to the season is Manchester City, of course. Um, Arsenal in fifth. Three wins, one draw. Could be worse. Uh, same record as Tottenham, Liverpool and West Ham. Uh, Brighton, of course, looking very good. They've got United next. Uh, we've got Everton up next, which is never an easy game, but they are struggling at the moment. We just never seem to win there. Uh, at the bottom, we're looking at Burnley, Luton, Everton, Sheffield, Bournemouth, Wolves, Chelsea. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's have, have a quick look at the fixture list. So, of course, we're going for a weekend away. It's the international break. We then come back to play at Goodison Park against Everton. And then the moment we've been waiting for, for seven years, we've been missing the Champions League anthem at the carpet. It's happening. I'll be singing it live. Uh, and then it's the London Derby, North London Derby against Tottenham. Brentford away. Oof, dirty game. Don't like that. That's a cup game, though. Um, Bournemouth, Lons, Man City. It's it's tough. It's going to be a really tough run, but I'm, I'm ready for it. Look at this gif. Look at this gif. I need, I need to... I, 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 can I, can I print a GIF and put it on a wall? <laughs> Incredible. Castro, I'm so sorry. I love Castro. I've met him once or twice. Such a nice guy, but I would be laughing at him right now. Um, <laughs> Man United scores. Correction. Arsenal scores. <laughs> Brilliant. This is just, do you know what? I'm copying that and I'm putting it in my Discord. Make sure you join the Discord, guys. There is a link down below. Let's just paste that in there. Just glorious. Um... What do we have next? Jason saying Declan Rice, bargain, twice the player Caicedo will ever be. Mm, difficult. Um, Caicedo's had a tough start at Chelsea, but um, yeah, Declan Rice is, was, will always be, for me, the better player. The potential he has is outrageous. Oh, I had another tweet, but it's been deleted. I can't believe it. Let's see if we can find anything else. Got your breath back yet, Gooners. What an image. That's the thumbnail. I need to copy that as well. That That is literally the thumbnail. What a moment that is. His new club. The difference a few millimetres make. Yes. The offside goal. The way that Gabriel, like, you know, backed up. He saw, he saw it happening in slow motion and he's just about got his shoulders and his, his core of his body back. It was so close and Garnet Garnacho had won it. He had won it. Oh, it's just, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Um, Fabio Vieira became only the 11th sub in Premier League history to both assist a goal and win a penalty in a game against Fulham. All four of, Vieira, all four of Vieira's Premier League assists have been from the bench. <laughs> oh, man. Look at this. Oh, <laughs> look at Saliba. That could be the thumbnail as well. Can't believe how much money United have spent to play like that. It's so true. It's so disappointing to see these hugely successful clubs plough money into their teams and play garbage, boring, terrorist football. And then you've got Arsenal who do it the right way. We play so nice. It's just silky smooth. We've invested smartly a lot of money for sure our net spend is atrocious we're spending a lot of money but it's done the right way and i love that it's just it's coming to fruition like you see it 
We played this beautiful Venga ball. <laughs> and I'm so proud of that. It means a lot. It really does. Because if I was a Chelsea fan and a United fan and seeing the investment year in, year out, and just seeing nothing, there's, there's just nothing on the pitch to be excited about. And it wasn't even that good of a performance. It really wasn't. We can do so much better than that. But um, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Crystal Palace 3-2 against Wolves. Liverpool 3-0. But this is the result that matters. And by the way, United finishing with Maguire and Evans as their centre-back partnership. I'll just leave it, with, leave it with you. There you go. 2023, Maguire and Evans. And I will leave you with this. Gabriel back in the team. Thank you very much. It needed to be done. I don't know why. As soon as the window closes, he's back in the team. Was there some temptation for him to go? I don't know, but we need him. Gabriel and Saliba, they're the, the duo we need. Arsenal into fifth place only because of goal difference. Four games, 10 points. Not a bad start to the season. Such a shame we couldn't beat Fulham last week, but worth it because we had today. That was, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I've got, I've got nothing left. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you after the international break for the game against Everton. Make sure you watch it live with me.